It's so good to be in church, Apostolic Church in Whitesboro, Texas. We are thankful for God's blessings and His presence and excited to worship Him and to enjoy the benefits and the blessings of living for God. Amen. It's a blessed life living for the Lord, having Him watch out for you, uh, enjoying His protection, His provision, and then the relationship that we get to have with Him is so awesome. Amen. Uh, so thankful for God's blessings. Amen. Worship with us. Amen. Give up, let Jesus take hold. 
for setting us free, for washing us in your blood, for anointing us and filling us with your spirit, baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. We have been redeemed by the love of God, and we are no longer our own, for we have been bought with the precious blood of Jesus. And we are covered, church. Hallelujah. Our past is covered. Our future is covered. He's paid the price. He's paid the way. Hallelujah. Amen. We are covered in so many ways and blessed and even more. Let's clap our hands and thank you tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus, for allowing us to enter into the kingdom of heaven and enjoy the benefits and the blessings of the redeemed. Amen. Amen. Isn't it awesome to serve the Lord? It's awesome to know the Lord. Amen. We have been blessed. And if you are covered by the blood, when you went down in a watery grave and you were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins were covered by the blood. Amen. Acts 2.38 says that baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. When that preacher speaks the name of Jesus over you in water baptism, the blood's applied through the name. That's why it's so vital that you're baptized in Jesus' name. If you were baptized in the title of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Father's a title. Son's a title. Holy Ghost is a title. It's, they're not names. They are references. I'm a father and I'm a son. You don't want to be baptized in my name. Amen. But you do want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, Hallelujah. So, if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, your sins are covered by His blood if you're baptized in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. New Lord. Testament, book of Acts, everyone was baptized in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. That was not an accident. That was not a fluke. No. That was not just for them. No. Amen. As a matter of fact, Acts 2 and I think about 40 says, this promise unto you and your children and those of you as far off as the Lord our God shall call. Yes. Amen. This, this, this is an everlasting gospel until Jesus comes back. It's applied. Amen. And we're blessed to be able to enjoy it and rejoice in it. Praise God. Last week, we got into talking about the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Entering the kingdom of heaven. And uh, I have not realized, I guess, how much Jesus taught about the kingdom of heaven. You read in the Gospels, and we're just in the book of Matthew, and we've already covered one, two, three, four, five, six six different scripture settings that he taught on the kingdom of heaven skipped several in the process and we're going to try to finish this off tonight and there's a bunch that we're not even going to touch where jesus taught parables on the kingdom of heaven amen and we have the privilege of entering into the kingdom of heaven how does that happen acts 2 38 Amen. Repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, right. being infilled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues, Glory. but the abiding fruit, love, joy, gentleness, meekness, faith, temperance. Yeah. Amen. Those are the fruit of the Spirit. They need to be in our lives, yes, and then we can enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Glory. On earth. Entering the kingdom of heaven on earth. Now, obviously, Jesus told Pilate, my kingdom is not on this world. If it were, my servants would fight for me. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is coming. We will see the new Jerusalem. We will see God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, there's no war. There's no sickness. There's no death. Oh, amen. There's no violence. There's no lying. There's no devil. Oh, amen. Okay, come on now. That kingdom is amazing. And we have entered that kingdom. But the Bible tells us very plainly that we are pilgrims. We are strangers. We're travelers. We are visitors. Amen. We are not in our heavenly kingdom. But we are from that heavenly kingdom. We are a part of that heavenly kingdom. As a matter of fact, we are ambassadors. We are representatives. We are the servants of that king. What's his name? Jesus. Amen. And he has called us into service. To what? To represent him while we're here. We are representatives of the kingdom of heaven. We are witnesses. He said a city set on a hill can't be hid. Everybody sees us. Some of us wish they didn't, but they do. Amen. You can't hide that fact. We are visual. 
And so when people see us, they should see representatives of the kingdom of heaven. Right. And so through us should emulate love, gentleness, meekness, faith, temperance, joy. Amen. The fruit of the spirit. And so they have an opportunity to come in contact with the kingdom of heaven. And if they want to, they can enter in too. Because Jesus paved the way for all. He's not willing that any don't make it. Amen. But unfortunately, there are many that will choose not to take advantage of this opportunity. And he won't make us. But he sure will come after us and try and get us. Amen. He loves us too much to see us perish. Praise God. Amen. We stopped last week. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 11. I'm going to let you remain seated tonight. And verse 11. I don't remember if I read this, but I want to read it just in case I do. Didn't uh, read it last week. This is a very powerful scripture to me. I believe we did finish on it. Matthew 11 and verse 11. Jesus makes a statement here concerning John the Baptist. And it is very powerful. And so to those that are born into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven, we have a huge blessing ahead of us. Amen. He says in Matthew 11 and 11, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women... There hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Jesus admits that. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, John the Baptist, we know, was the forerunner of Christ. His position, his honor, he did an awesome job. He was everything he was supposed to be and more. And so you know in God's eyes... He is lifted up. He is awesome. He is a great man of God. But he says concerning the kingdom of heaven, to those that are born into the kingdom of heaven, the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. Now, I believe personally a big part of that is that we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so, therefore, as Jesus said, these things that I do greater than this shall you do. John the Baptist was limited in the miracles he was able to perform in the ministry. He ministered mightily in repentance. He came preaching repentance. He was a prophet and a preacher. But we not only can prophesy and preach, but we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Lord. We can pray for any kinds of situation. We can cast out devils in Jesus' name. We have power and authority that John did not get the privilege of using. Right. We're talking about the kingdom of heaven tonight and entering into the kingdom of heaven. With that power, amen, is a great opportunity. Acts 1 and 8 says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost amen. has come upon you. Amen. To be witnesses, all right? Now, amen. the witness is whether it is whether we are praying for somebody and God is answering a miracle or answering a prayer or whether it is... Our life that we're living before them, whether it is God healing and delivering us miraculously and people seeing that, amen, we have power. We know, as Romans 8, 28 says, all things are working together to the good of those who love the Lord right. and are the called according to his purpose. Amen. In the kingdom of heaven, it's vital that we strive to do what he wants us to do, be what Jesus wants us to be. But when we are... Then what does he do? He orders our footsteps. He puts words in our mouth to speak. Amen. He sets us up for blessings. He sets us up to be a blessing. Yes. All right? So the kingdom of heaven is an amazing, amazing place to enter into. And those that have not entered in yet probably look on and go, hey, you crazy. You know, what, what are you talking about? But to those that have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, yes. you're like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, hey, you ain't going to get me out of this thing, man. Amen. As long as God will keep me, I'm going to be in this all the way through. Because it is amazing serving the Lord and living for the Lord. Move, moving up to chapter 13 and verse 24, Jesus teaches a parable. In this chapter, he teaches many parables concerning the kingdom of heaven. But chapter 13 and verse 24, he teaches a parable about so about seed being sowed in a field and it's bad seed. It was the work of an enemy. And it is an illustration concerning the kingdom of heaven and hopefully it will help us to understand how serious it is in serving God and being a part of the kingdom of heaven. But in Matthew 13 and verse 24, 
Make sure I'm in the right place. I got to go a little farther. All right, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened, or it's likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. The tares were, were weeds. They were, they were no good. It was to ruin the crop. Verse 26, But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we should go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and buy them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barns. Okay, so verse 24, he starts out, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto this. And he teaches this parable about a man who plants a field, and lo and behold, an enemy comes in and sows weeds in the midst of it to ruin the harvest so that the harvest cannot be taken care of. Now, in verse Let's move on up to verse 37. Jesus explains this parable to the disciples. Because understand, the parable is a natural illustration of a spiritual situation. And in this, he explains to us how this is spiritually. Verse 37. He answered and said unto them, He that sows the good seed is the Son of Man. All right. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. So you see how this works? Jesus has sown good seed, all right? And we are part of the kingdom, and this is what it's all about, the harvest. He is trying to reap a good harvest, and he only wants the good wheat, all right? It's obvious that weeds are not good for anything, all right? They serve a purpose, but not this purpose. All right, And so he's letting us know that this is what has happened. Now listen, he said in verse 39, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So Satan has sown many tares or many people out there that are not going to live for God, that are a hindrance to the work of God, that are of no value to the kingdom of God. Okay? Because they are not a part of the kingdom of God. They're doing their own thing. They're being what they are. And uh, they will live or they will be here for a while. But in the end, all right, those tares are going to be separated from the wheat. And who's going to do that? The angels. And then the wheat will be gathered. Okay, so the crop will be gathered in. Verse 40. As, uh, let's, let's go to 39. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity or sin. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. So if you want to receive this, fine. If you want to be upset by this, that's up to you too. We can take these parables however we like. There are some people that these will offend. But the truth of the matter is that God is going to redeem his seed, his loved ones. Amen. Amen. This is why he came and died on Calvary. He has made himself available to all of humanity. And everyone can be weak. Everyone can be productive in the kingdom of God. But we must be obedient. We must not sin. All right? Sin is disobedience to God. When we refuse to do what God wants. Yes. And we can do that. There's nothing stopping us from doing that. Matter of fact, Satan will encourage us tremendously and try to get us to sin. Right. All right? That's the way he operates. He's the one that is planting the tares, trying to ruin the harvest. But Jesus has already seen through that. Amen. Amen. 
He already knows how this plays out. Remember, he knows the end from the beginning. And so he says the angels will separate the tares. They will be bound in bundles, cast into the lake of fire. This is a representation of heaven versus hell. Hell being a place of eternal judgment and damnation. Heaven being our heavenly reward where we are headed to. All right. And so he says those that want to receive this, this is, this is for you. Amen. And you'll notice that the next word, and we're not going to get into it, verse 44, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a treasure. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a merchant. Verse 47, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a net. Are you getting a little bit of a hint that there might be a kingdom of heaven on earth? Yes. And we get to enter into it. We get to be a part of it. Lord. Jesus went to a lot of trouble to reveal to those that are hungry and want to know about the kingdom of heaven. Because it is real. It is happening. Amen. It is what this whole world is about. And most people don't even realize it. Yeah. We have governments set up today and they have no clue that this is all here because of the kingdom of heaven. Right. You realize why we're even on this planet? Mm -hmm. God spoke the stars into existence. Yes, yes. God spoke the sun into existence. God spoke the earth into existence. All right. the creatures on this planet. Yes. He gave us just enough air, just enough water, just enough sun. And then he breathed into man the breath of life. Oh, and he yes. brought us oh, into yes. existence on this planet. Oh, yes. We are a product of the kingdom of heaven. We are here because of the kingdom of heaven. Because God chose to have mercy. And he wanted to give us an opportunity to be his children, his sons, his daughters, a part of the kingdom of heaven. And it's not enough just that we're sons and daughters because some sons and daughters are not, they don't get with the program real well. There are some children that just don't want to go with the program. But there are some that will honor their father and their mother, that will bring honor, and as a result, they will inherit the blessings. All right? And this is the way to do with God. He put us here. We're his creation. We're his sons and daughters. If we'll honor him, he's going to honor us and bless us. That's right. In, immeasurably. Ways that we cannot even begin to understand. That's true. And, uh, and it, goes, it goes for eternity, not just this little lifespan that we're looking at. You know, we look at the 70 years that God has given us, and we think, oh, that's all I got to work with. Oh, my friend. Huh. That's just one little stepping stone in, in the journey. Amen. Because we step off of this into eternity with Jesus forever. Unless we find ourselves in the lake of fire and judgment. All right. Let's go to chapter 16 and verse 15. Jesus gives to Peter the keys to the kingdom. This is awesome because Peter is the head of the church or representative of the church. And so this is given to the church. Peter's just the first one who got to hand them out. Amen. Matthew 16 and verse 15. Jesus asks a question of the disciples. He says unto them, let whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon or Jonah. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. First of all, this is a revelation. If you know that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh, Christ the Messiah, that's a revelation. Yes. Not everybody has this revelation. Not everybody understands this. Amen. Amen. In the world that we live in, there are there's a majority of people who do not grasp or understand that Jesus is the Messiah. That's right. That he is God manifesting himself in the flesh to his creation. And so Jesus just told Peter, he says, the reason you understand this is because I hope you're understanding it to it. That's right. Amen. And so if you understand this, understand it's a revelation. And revelations can be lost. All right. There are many people that have gotten this revelation and have been hurt, upset, mad, disappointed, disillusioned down the road. They have turned from it and gone into error and no longer believe that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh and believe that he is the creator. And so for those, they've lost that revelation. Amen. 
And I believe they can get it back if they live long enough. Somebody's praying for them because we've known of many that have backslid, walked away from God early on, and then come back to the truth and have re-energized this great truth. But he says, this is a revelation. And he goes on to say to him in verse 18, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Peter means pebble or small stone. Okay, you're, you're just a small stone. But he said, upon this rock, and I believe that's on Christ Jesus, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So Peter is given the keys to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So what are those keys? How does he use them? You get a chance to look at our church card sometime. It talks about those keys. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Peter preaches the first gospel message. He has witnessed to all the crowd that comes to see what happened after they got the Holy Ghost. Some accused him of being drunk, full of new wine. But Peter says, they're not drunk like you think, in Acts 2. And uh, he goes on to explain to them how they crucified Christ and what they had done and how God had ordained it. And the people say back to him in verse 137, said, what do we do? And Peter says, repent, turn for your wicked ways. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So these sins are washed away, put under the blood, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. The anointing power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and you will have actual and name power to overcome to be witnesses. Oh, Amen. This is the keys that Jesus gave to Peter. It's no accident that Peter was the spokesman on the day of Pentecost to first deliver this message. Jesus had already planted the seeds. Amen. Amen. Now, if you go back to John chapter 3, and uh, Jesus talks to Nicodemus, the Pharisee that comes to him in the middle of the night, he tells Nicodemus that except a man's born of the water, baptized in Jesus' name, and of the Spirit, he cannot see or enter into the kingdom. That's right. The kingdom of heaven. We're talking about entering the kingdom of heaven tonight. Yes. This is amazing. This is monumental. This is groundbreaking. This is this is the message that the whole world yes. wants to hear and needs to know. Yes. And doesn't even know it. Doesn't realize it. There are many that we will share this message with, and they will have no idea that this is the greatest news, the greatest information or truth that they can ever get their hands on. Yes. And many will go, eh, I got better things to do. And they'll walk off from it. Amen. But then there are many that people like us are praying for, and God is dealing with them, yes, he is. working on them. He's placing things into their path. He is reaching out to them. Amen. And their day will come, and their eyes will be open like Peter's, and they'll go, ah, that's what they were talking about. Because they couldn't see it. It's a revelation. And there are many people who are Christian-based who have not experienced this. They don't have the keys to the kingdom. They have been baptized in Jesus' name. They have not been filled with the Holy Ghost as they were in the book of Acts. And, and there's teaching that teaches that's not necessary. You know, see what I mean? <laughs> you don't need these keys. All you have to do is believe. Amen. God has a kingdom. He says those that obey can enter in. Those that don't, that's their choice. For whatever reason. Understand Satan is the one who is what? Planting terrors. He's put a lot of false information out there. He's put a lot of misleading, misguiding situations. He's caused a lot of problems in the church that have hurt people and drove them out. But it doesn't stop the kingdom of heaven from existing. That's right. It doesn't stop our need for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. If everyone around us fails us, Jesus will never fail us. So what do you do? You hold on to Jesus. That's all you can do. You hold on to Jesus. And you know what? When the smoke clears and the dust settles, guess what? It'll be you and Jesus. And then you'll be wherever he wants you to be. And you'll find the family of God. You'll be where you need to be. And you'll accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. 
So the keys to the kingdom are critical in this. Amen. This is a literal kingdom. This is a real thing. And to those that have experienced it, you know many Christians today don't know if they're saved because nothing really happened. They may have repeated some prayers. They may have, you know, shaken a preacher's hand. They may have Whatever they've done, it, it didn't do anything for them, really. But they're like, well, okay, if this is what it takes. I, I, yeah. I'm telling you, you you pray through to the Holy Ghost with yeah. the initial yeah. evidence of speaking yeah. in other tongues. And yield yourself yeah. to God. Yeah. Because I do know of many that have come into a Pentecostal service. And they have been moved by the emotion and by the, by the preaching of the word. And God's spirit dealing with them. And they have prayed through to the Holy Ghost and had no idea what even happened to them. And thought that everybody was out of their mind. And when they left there, they went right back out into sin and had no idea what happened. But then there have been some that have come to an apostolic service, prayed through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they knew this was the power of God. And it would change them if they would yield to it. And they went out of there changed, transformed, praying in the Holy Ghost, working for God, doing their best to become what God wanted them to be. And their lives were turned around. It didn't matter if they were drug addicts. It didn't matter if they were alcoholics. It didn't matter if their lives were broken. It didn't matter what their past was. They were changed and transformed by the Holy Ghost. Lord. Amen. By the keys that change us. Yeah. Amen. That yeah. cause us to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so we see the kingdom of heaven is amazing. And it is awesome. Praise God. Praise God. In uh, chapter 18, we're moving... We're, we're creeping forward through through Matthew here now. Just hang in. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff on the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Amen. There is a lot. You read through there, you'll find out that he taught and taught and taught and taught and taught on the kingdom of heaven. Chapter 18 and verse 1. At the same time came the disciples of Jesus saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? You see, there's all kinds of things that we're going to run up to in this. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, hey, yeah. And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. And he said, Verily, or truly I say unto you, except you be converted, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, repentant, right? Except you be converted and become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. We have to come into this with a childlike faith. Amen. Little children will forgive anybody, they will love everybody. They will trust everybody. They're amazing. And Jesus says, you know what? It's what you need to be like when you give your heart to me. Just trust me. Just love me. Just do whatever I want and be whatever I want. And it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And he says, and then you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. We're not in charge. He is. Yeah. Yeah. He's our heavenly father. And when daddy says to do something, we should do it. Amen. We should trust him. We should, should trust yes, we should be what he wants. Verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. In other words, we are going to have to submit ourselves to this idea. <laughs> I've been in charge long, long enough. I, I'm going to stay in charge. You don't want to tell me what to do. Uh, you ain't going to get very far. <laughs> Amen. You know what? The Bible says he that would be chief among you, referring to the preacher, the minister, the ones in charge, let him be servant to all. That's how it works in the kingdom of God. Wait a minute, I hired on here so I can be in charge. Uh -oh. First of all, I didn't hire on. He called me. I said, okay, if that's what you want, I'll do my best. Amen. And then he said, love everybody, serve everybody. Yes. Amen. This is the kingdom of heaven. It's not like the world. Somebody say that. It's not like the world. This is the kingdom of heaven. It's a whole different thing. And it's amazing. Verse 5. Whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. So anybody that will trust us and receive what we have to share with them, God says, I'm going to accept them. I'm going to, I'm going to help them into this thing. Amen. Verse 6. But... Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. 
This is a word of caution to anyone who would come against the servants of God. Yes. Because our daddy is a jealous God. He loves us. He will do anything for us. He went to Calvary for us. He loves us with a love that is unsurpassed on this planet. And if somebody intentionally hurts us, that's why he said pray for them. That's right. We need to pray for them. Amen? Because if my daddy gets a hold of you, you're in trouble. And so I'm going to pray for you that he's merciful and he doesn't, doesn't get a hold of you because if he does, I'm going to pray that he saves you and delivers you and blesses you because if he has to judge you for what you have done to me, it's not going to be pretty. Amen. In the kingdom of heaven, as Jesus said, his servants, he's a jealous God. He watches over his servants. He watches over his sons. Matter of fact, we're no longer servants, but we are sons and daughters. We are adopted. Amen. And he chose us. We didn't choose him. Amen. You're not here tonight by accident. He chose you. He put you here. No, I didn't have to come here. <laughs> yeah, because he's arranged it so you're here. <laughs> Amen. Because he wants us to get the message he wants us to receive of him. Amen. And so he says here that uh, those that offend his children or his servants, they'd be better off if they was drowned in the ocean. Verse 7, the woe unto the world, but because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Amen. We'll stop there for now. We are in the kingdom of heaven. We have been set free. We have been washed. We have been blessed. Amen. Thank you, God. Oh, my goodness. Time has got away from us, and I'm not very far. <laughs> All right. Amen. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the Lord here where we want to go with this um, because I still got a lot, a lot, to, a lot to go. Um, so I guess we will uh, we'll continue on with this when we get back to vacation. Praise the Lord. The kingdom of heaven. We talked about this a little bit last week uh, after service, after we got out of the service. And uh, think about the world that you and I live in, church. The life that we live. Being in the kingdom of heaven your life is regulated by God. Okay? He's able to watch over our footsteps. He's able to keep track of the number of hair on our head. He has watched our life from conception till we step out of this earthly vessel. He knows everywhere we're going to go, everything we're going to do. And we're in an amazing place with Him. Amen. And so when you and I wake up in the morning, we don't just wake up as the world would like us to think, some kind of amoeba that, that, that transformed in a pond somewhere and evolved into some creature that's what we happen to be now and has no value. We're, we're, we're no more valuable than pond scum because we're just a biological mass that has showed up on this planet. We're the servants of the Most High God. Glory. And he put us here. And he wants to bless us. He wants to use us. He wants to open up opportunities to us. And so when we wake up in the morning and we start our world, we're starting it by putting our hand in his and saying, Daddy, where do you want to go today? What are you going to do? What have you got planned for me today? I can't wait to see what you're going to show me today. Amen. Except you be as a little child. This is the kind of faith he's looking for in us. We don't wake up grumbling and mad and all bent out of shape about everything that's going wrong around us because we know he's got it. And it. nobody said it's easy. I, I, I'm not going to tell you that. This is not easy. All right? Because our flesh is going to fight us. The devil's going to fight us. It takes a lot of faith to trust God. But you know something about children? No matter what happens, they're resilient. They can fall off their bike and, and, and scratch their knee and then come 
brothers, you know, and you, you love them, and you, you, you put a little bandage on your knee, and next thing you know, you pat them on the bottom, and Whoa, they're gone again, man. Yeah. You ain't slowing them down. <laughs> That's the last they're going to think about it. It's over. There's too much fun out there. There's too much to get into as a child of God. Things are going to happen. We're going to hear, but we need to be like a little child and say, oh, good. God's got to know it's going to be all right. Here we go. What else you got going on? Amen. Yeah, man, I ain't going to do that again. <laughs> we are going to learn some things. Right. Amen. And he's going to what? Teach us. Yes. He's going to lead us. He's going to guide us. And as we go on our journey, what we find out is those things that we were boo-boos, we learn valuable lessons from. And when we get down the road, it allows us to help people from experiencing those very things. All right. It helps us to minister to people who are going through those very things. Because we've got God. They don't. They give up hope. We didn't. We've got God. We have unlimited hope. We have, it's, it's exponential. Amen. They give up. They lost it. But God, ever present help in the time of need. Amen. Never slumbers, never sleeps. That's right. This is the kingdom of heaven. And this is something that we are a part of. We have entered into the kingdom of God. And it's amazing. And, and it's not for sissies. I'm not lying. It's not easy. There are times that we are challenged. Job went through it. But when he came out of it on the other side, he was twice blessed. Okay? Amen. And he was blessed before he went through that trial, but he was twice blessed when he came out of that trial. This is the kingdom of heaven. Whatever happens in our life works together, as Romans 8, 28 says, to the good. There's a purpose. There's a reason for it. Our Heavenly Father is training us. There are times that we as parents will let our children experience difficult things because we know that they will learn by it. And we're going to watch it. We'll put them on that bike, but we're going to run alongside it. Okay? Because we know they're wild or crash. <laughs> but we're going to try to catch them if we can. If you can part themselves. Well, our Heavenly Father is doing the same thing with us. And yes, there's some risk involved, but not with God. He's got this. Yes, he does. He's got you. And you know what? It's a whole lot easier when you can have childlike faith. And just wait. You know what, God? You got this. Amen. And look for the good in life. And look for the hand of God. And look for his purpose in your life. And look for the lives that you can be a blessing in. And look for the opportunities that God is going to give you to be a witness and a light. As we stand to our feet tonight, let's give him thanks for being so good to us. Father, you have opened up the windows of heaven and poured out blessings upon blessings. And Lord, we have come to receive. We have childlike faith. And we believe you at your word, Lord, that there are opportunities and blessings in the kingdom of God that we have not yet experienced. And so, Lord, we're feeling after them. We're reaching after them because we know that you have put good things out there. You have placed some blessings out there for us that we will come in contact with. And, Lord, we are anxious to see what you have in store for us, God. And so, Lord, I pray for your servants. I pray for your children, God. Lord, that their faith doesn't fail. God, that they will be encouraged on their journey. That they will take heart and strength and realize you love them so much. And they are so special to you. And you have so much placed in them. And they just don't know it yet, God. Yeah. And you will open our eyes up. You will reveal to us one day. But, oh, Father, thank you for this opportunity. God bless okay. your servants. Guide us this week as we go into your kingdom to do our Father's bidding. And, Lord, we'll rejoice in it every day. In Jesus' name. Somebody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands and thank you for your Thank you, Lord, for pouring out the goodness and mercy. Thank you for blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.